na 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 Welcome back, my friend, to BJJ Brick Quick. You downloaded it. Shouldn't be a surprise. But that's what we're calling this thing. My name is Byron. We talk about a jiu topic pretty quick. Usually we kind of go off the mats, and then we bring it back to jiu-jitsu, doing that uh, a few episodes in a row here. Last episode, I just told you I, uh, with my wife, hiked up to the top of Kilimanjaro, the highest point in Africa, 19,000 plus feet. And we're talking about that again today. This one, I'm just going to title, Trusting My Guide. And you can think of it as like the parallel, he'll be like trusting your coach. So... Um, you know, I, the main the language they speak in Tanzania, where Kilimanjaro is, is Swahili. I don't speak Swahili. I learned a few words, as as anybody would, as you try to be friendly and and meet people uh, on your vacation. But I don't speak Swahili, and so you really need to have some people that you trust a lot. And the mountain activity of, of hiking up to that elevation can definitely be dangerous. And so you, you put your trust in somebody who's a professional. And you, you trust that he's going to keep you safe, you know, off the mountain and, and you know, in transit and take care of you there because he can't even speak the language. You know, you, you have a hard time communicating with people. Uh, you have a guide to help you with that sometimes. And on the mountain, uh, I, I don't all, I guess, fully understand what the guide was doing, but the guide uh, would take our oxygen levels every night and look at our heart rate would tell us whether we needed to, to push more water or food or what kinds of food, you know, what to wear for the next day, if it's going to be a cold night. Uh, you know, I remember the one night he said, you're going to put your coat on and get in your sleeping bag <laughs> and it's going to be cold. And I, I, I'm not a person who gets cold that easy. I'm like, I'm going to sleep through this. I don't want to put my coat on and wake up all sweaty. I've got to have this coat, you know, it's an eight-day trip, and I don't know if it was on day three or two or whatever, but it's fairly early on. I don't want to get my coat all sweaty in the middle of the night and have to wear this even now, even more dirty, sweaty coat than, than I had. So I said, I'm not going to put my coat on. And sure enough, it didn't take long. The sun went down. I went to bed, and it got cold. And I woke up, and I it was just hard to shake, you know, being that cold, even though I had a sleeping bag. My wife slept great. <laughs> she had her coat on. She had like five layers of pants and 32 socks. or what, Like she really dressed. She listened to the guide. And I said, I don't need to do that. I know my body, whatever. And I was wrong. And that's just one of many examples about, you know, uh, trusting a, a professional. And he had been up this mountain, you know, over 100 times with 100 different sets of clients and here I am, my first time, my first couple of days, and I didn't take the advice. And and I would find myself, you know, not... Uh, one part about, you know, getting into the altitude like that is you lose your appetite. And nothing really tastes good. You haven't you don't have a desire to eat anything. And he would just keep pushing us food. He's like, you got to eat today. Tomorrow, you're, you, you, you could be sick tomorrow, and you can't eat. If it just doesn't taste that good, eat it today. Eat it today, guys. And he, he really pushed that. And we had a couple of days where we, you know, not the same time, luckily, for me and my wife, but one day I was sick and one day she was sick and a couple of times like that. And it's just like, it, we're not going to eat that much today, but I'm glad I ate yesterday. I ate good yesterday, so I'm going to kind of coast on that a little bit. You get you get down in your nutrition or hydration and the altitude sickness will sneak up on you like a ninja <laughs> in the night. Uh so really just trusting him on his advice that, that he was giving. Think about your coach. How much has your coach you know, been involved in jiu-jitsu? How, how much longer on the mats? How many more you know, students have they helped guide? I don't know whether you're fairly new or you're an experienced grappler. But when your coach gives you some advice and you just blankly ignore it, uh, you might check that. You know, it might be really good advice. It might be something that is really going to help your game. Or it might be off the mat advice. Maybe uh, you're kind of going in a weird place and, and making some decisions that are not going to be great for you or your jiu-jitsu or your future or your employment or whatever, your, your health and safety. Maybe you're doing some crazy stuff and, and, and really rolling the dice out there and your coach is giving you 
you know, pump the brakes a little bit on this or, or giving you advice about your triangle or whatever. That person has done this, has helped guide people many, many times. And when I said I don't need to wear a coat when I crawled into my sleeping bag, I was wrong. And I, and I suffered the rest of the night for it. I couldn't warm up. And, and when, when, when you just ignore your coach's advice and say, yeah, that's not for me, <laughs> you might be doing the same thing. Now, it might not be good advice for you. Maybe your coach is just giving out crappy advice. I don't know. But it, it shouldn't just be ignored. And if you don't respect your coach enough to, to at least consider the advice, you might kind of consider where you're at. And, and see, you know, is that the right place for you or, you know, mentally or actually at the right gym, whatever. So I, I really want you to appreciate your coach today or coaches or your, your teammates that are willing to give you some advice and take those, that, those, that advice to heart and see if it would fit you. And maybe it won't fit you. I could have easily just woke up super sweaty and been, you know, kind of annoyed at myself for getting my coat, uh, smelly like a key. <laughs> I've got to wear this thing for another week. Uh, that'd be annoying. I was wrong. Hope you have enjoyed the podcast. If you want to support this uh, endeavor, check us out on Patreon, and you can pledge uh, per month there, or you could uh, download our audiobook, Your First Year in BJJ. It's in the store on the website, bjjbook.com. Hope you have a great day today. Stay sweaty, but don't be sweating a sleeping bag. <laughs>